I want to ask you about some of the makeup uh, of your caucus. According yes. to CBS Records, 70% of the House GOP members denied the results of the 2020 election. You put many of them on very key committees, intelligence, homeland security, oversight. Why are you elevating people who are denying reality like that? Well, if you look to the Democrats, their ranking men or member Raskin had the same thing, denied Trump or Bush was in there. Benny Thompson, who was a... Did you see those numbers did that you we see just the, put up there? Seventy yeah. percent. Did you also be fair and equal where you looked at Raskin did the same thing. Benny Thompson, who's a ranking member and was the chair, these individuals were chair of the Democratic I'm Party. I'm asking you as leader of but Kevin also, McCarthy's also, House I'm also, why you made these choices. These were your choices. Yeah, they're my choices, but they're the conference choices. But I'm also asking you, when you look to see just Republicans, Democrats have done the same thing. So maybe it's not denying. Maybe it's the only opportunity they have to have a question about what go went on during the election. So if you want to hold Republicans to that equation, why don't you also hold Democrats? Why don't you hold Jamie Raskin? Why don't you hold Benny Thompson? When Democrats had appointed them to be chair, mm -hmm. I never once heard you ask Nancy Pelosi or any Democrat that question when they were in power in the majority when they question you're talking about things going back to 2000 which was a time well, you're when talking about i didn't the, have this show back then which yeah. is why i'm asking you no, now no, about but your they were they were, in, they were in power last congress so why why but you're talking about questions but, from 2000 but, but you're election. asking me about questions about that happened to another you just congress. made you're, you're actually about made. questions for another congress so the only thing i'm this simply talking congress these these are members who just got elected by their constituents and we put them into committees and i'm proud to do it but doesn't it further wear down credibility when you put someone who's under state, local, federal, and international investigation as a representative of Are your you party on committees? I'm talking about George no, Santos, I, uh, representative from well, New York. We should have that discussion. So let's have that discussion. You want to bring up S Santos, and let's talk about the institution itself, because I agree wholeheartedly that Congress is broken. And I think, I think your listeners or viewers should understand what proxy voting was, because it never took place in Congress But I'm asking before. you about George Santos. I know you asked me a question. Let me because ask you. Because you could but put it to a vote. You to asked me a question. Answer. I'd appreciate if you let me answer. So let's go through this, because it's not one simple answer. Answer. Congress is broken based upon what has transpired in the last Congress. The American public wasn't able to come in to see us. People voted by proxy, meaning you didn't have to show up for work. Mm -hmm. Bills didn't go have to go through committee. So what I'm trying to do is open the people's house back for the people so their voice is there, so people are held accountable. So now, as I just had in the last week, for the first time yeah. in seven years, every member got to vote. If now, you got a third of your caucus to vote to I, oust him, you could do so. Do you, do you don't think you could get your Republicans to do that? I wasn't finished answering the question. So. If every single new person brought into Congress was elected by their constituents, what their constituents have done has lend their voice to the American public. So those members can all serve on committee. Now, what I'm trying to do is change some of these committees as well. Like the Intel Committee is different than so any other committee. So you're just not going to answer the question I asked. Well, no, I, no, you don't get to question whether I answer it. You asked a question. I'm trying to get you through that. I don't you think you said the name George Santos like once. <laughs> well, no, you're but you know what? I you're just, talking about proxy but, voting but, no, no, and no. other things. But you, no, you started the question with Congress was broken, and I agreed with no, you. But I Congress. was answering the question mm -hmm. of how Congress is broken and how we're changing it. So if I can okay. finish the question that you asked me, how Congress is broken, I equated every yep. single member. They just got elected by their by their mm -hmm. constituents, they have a right to serve. So that okay. means that Santos can serve on a committee the same okay. way Swalwell, who had a relationship with a Chinese spy, but Speaker. they will not serve on intel. They're wrapping because me I in the control room because we're Well, that's unfortunate. Break. I wish I could I answer the question. It there. It's like Kevin McCarthy didn't read the book and then got called up to do a verbal book report in front of the class and just let a meandering string of empty filler words fall out of his face until the bell rang. I mean, my God, now I understand why Republicans are desperately clinging onto the filibuster, considering I don't think I've ever heard someone use more words to say absolutely nothing in my entire life. I mean, it is almost an incomprehensible degree of whataboutism to get asked a question on George Santos and instead delve into a full-blown monologue where you decide that the real question here, the real issue at the heart of this is proxy voting? Is that tourists couldn't visit the Capitol? That discharge petitions meant that bills could skip committee votes? Like, I'm sorry, but what? I don't know who needs to hear this. Meaning, I literally don't know who needs to hear this because it wasn't even the question that Margaret Brennan asked. But our beef with George Santos has nothing to do with what Kevin McCarthy views as institutional issues with Congress. Now, 
As a quick aside on just those issues, proxy voting was implemented because of COVID, and rightfully so, considering half of Congress, meaning the Republicans, decided that masks and vaccines were a communist conspiracy. And given that the average age of these people is 140, I don't exactly see the issue with allowing them not to congregate in a room full of 435 people. Now on the issue of tourists visiting, who cares? Seriously, who out there thinks that this is one of the major issues plaguing this country that a few people can't tour our capital each day? If you need an example of the fact that Kevin McCarthy is so egregiously out of touch with the people of this country, it's him pretending that not enough tours of Congress is one of the biggest issues that Americans are facing today. But in a way, his desperation to avoid answering any questions on George Santos is actually the perfect answer about George Santos, because it shows how deathly afraid Republicans are of taking any accountability for this guy. They are so scared of having to answer for their own conference that they'd rather allow themselves to devolve into a puddle of whataboutisms on national TV than just speak honestly. The obvious fact is that George Santos is a massive liability for Republicans, not just because he's a pathological liar who stole money from a dying dog's GoFundMe and has a special place in hell waiting for him, but also because he is a perfect microcosm of his entire party. This is someone who has zero shame about lying, cheating, and stealing to consolidate power for himself, and he presents such an easy caricature of exactly what the GOP is. And Republicans hate that. Not because he lies, they all lie. They hate that because he makes it so easy for the rest of us to see exactly who they are. And Kevin McCarthy's non-answers weren't constrained to talking about George Santos. When Margaret Brennan asked him why he's filled up key committees with as many as 73% election deniers, the only thing that Kevin McCarthy can do is point to the fact that a couple of Democrats have objected to election results over the last 20 years. Now, first of all, if the best that Kevin McCarthy can do to draw this false equivalency is to find two Democrats over the last two decades and pretend that that's the same as 70% of his entire Republican conference in the House serving as election deniers, then that pretty much undermines his entire argument right off the bat. But second, and more importantly, lawmakers have the right to state an objection, and lawmakers from both parties have employed that tool in the past. The difference with 2020 is that Republicans were part of a coordinated effort to abuse that tool in conjunction with a fucking insurrection to overturn the results and anoint Donald Trump the winner of a race that he lost. If you can't tell the difference between those two things, I'm sorry, but you're living on a different planet here. And let's be clear, Kevin McCarthy knows that. He knows that his position is utterly indefensible, which is why he almost comically deflects for full minutes at a time, desperately trying to draw this equivalency. Even when Brennan explains that his objection that he's referring to happened decades ago, and she's focused on what he's doing now, today, still all Kevin McCarthy can do is insist that a Democrat objecting to George W. Bush's election 20 years ago was the exact same thing as Republicans helping Trump stage a coup. Tell you what, McCarthy's shamelessness might have made him dangerous if he wasn't too dumb and ineffective for it to matter. So look, I get that Kevin McCarthy will continue to try and assert his authority and go on these Sunday shows because he thinks it's helping his cause, but all he's doing by desperately airing whataboutisms and deflections dating back to the Bush era is showing that he's got zero answers. He's got words and he's happy to let them pour out of his face until he can get to the safety of a commercial break, but no actual answers. And that's more telling than any BS talking point that he can cook up. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can click the thumbnail right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work even further, the best way is to subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. There you can check out my interviews with major players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, Jamie Raskin, and so many more. Plus other interviews that live exclusively on the podcast. That link is also right here on this screen, or just search No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen wherever you listen to podcasts.